uh, welcome to lesson 10 of the NPTEL course on industrial automation and control. So, today we are going to talk about uh, data acquisition systems and before we describe the instructional objectives, let me say a few words about why they are so important. Uh, you know, uh, so far in the course we have, uh, first of all in the first two lessons we have seen that uh, the, we have seen the industrial automation pyramid, right. So, we saw that one of the, one of the major uh, features or characterizing features of advanced automation is that uh, there is a lot of data flow up and down, that is data actually uh, gets into the into computers and it is all about computers because there are computers at every layer of the automation pyramid of various types which do a lot of real time computing right and they do control optimization etcetera and that is how the benefits of industrial automation are actually realized. So, uh, so there is a lot of data flow from one level to the other right and now all this data which is actually basically acquired from the plant. Uh, floor where the where the where the actual machines are from the plants from the from the from the industrial equipment they are they actually get into the, these computer systems through the sensors so we have studied sensors that how these process uh, quantities are sensed and today we are going to end our sensor module by looking at the data acquisition systems which will interface to the sensor on one side and to the computer on the other side so, through these systems the, the data will the analog data usually analog there can be some digital data also. So, the analog data will come through the sensors get converted from their physical forms into some electrical forms and then through the data acquisition systems will get into digital form into the computers. And then they are going to flow then they are going to be utilized by the various algorithms residing at these computers and they are going to get communicated to other computers after various processing and get utilized at the various levels of automation. So, what we are going to study today is how the data which is which is coming from the sensors gets into the computers or how digital data is going to be acquired right. So, that is the subject of the lesson today. So, moving on. Uh, we have as instructional objectives to get familiar with the structure and components of typical data acquisition systems and to understand the basic mechanism of the process of sampling you know by which data sampling and quantization because when we have digital data we do not have all the points on the on the continuous process, but we have points values of the signals which are uh, at close intervals or at intervals of the sampling time and it is not only it is a it is not a because we are going to manipulate it in the computer and the computer although it has a large number of bits and usually quantization may or may not be an issue, but nevertheless there is a quantization issue as well and uh, that whether it is important or not that depends on the computer. So, it is if it is an 8 bit computer then it could be important if it is a 32 bit floating point computer it may not be important. In any case we will take a look at the basic concept of sampling and quantization and finally, we will see some typical circuit architectures that actually physically how is it that the analog electrical signals get converted to, to, to digital signals which are interfaced with the computer hardware. So, we will we'll look at that. So, these are the basic objectives. So, coming on to a data acquisition system what this figure sh we, we, we want to define it first. So, we define it as follows that it is a right. Uh, so, it is a collection of hardware and software components let me let me choose. So, uh, it is a collection of hardware and software components that enable a computer to receive physical signals. So, you see this is what this picture says that this is the process 
maybe I have to change my pen again. So, this is the process then and there are various you know uh, hardware for example, data is may first enter through signal conditioning modules. It, it may it may be serial data also sometimes it, it may go to go to go to PLCs or it may go through you know these are some actuators for example, this looks like a this looks like a valve um, some something like a motorized valve and finally, so from all these equipment there are through data acquisition processes that it actually gets into a it gets into a computer. So, once it gets into the computer through this sort of you know electronic boards and there is some software residing in the computer. So, this software does two things it firstly helps to uh, helps these cards to transfer the data into the computer or other interfaces and secondly it may help in you know the actual usage of the data that is in, in terms of display in terms of uh, decision making trending alarm generation what, what have you. So, some of it may, may be utilized at that computer itself where it is being acquired and some of it may actually be transmitted to other parts of the system through computer networks. So, at, so at that point it becomes pure computer communication. So, we are primarily going to look at this part of the system where from various equipment on the plant the, the data gets into the computer right. So, uh, so let us first look at a block diagram and see the major uh, functionality I am sorry mm, I do not know what is happening here yeah. So, this is in this block diagram we have this physical process change of pen again this is the physical process and then this is the sensor up to this we actually understand. Uh, now, from the sensor now the as we have understood as we have learned that the sensor itself may have some signal conditioning, but at the same time there may be further signal conditioning required or in some cases if the sensor signal conditioning if you, if you know it is if it is not possible to uh, put signal conditioning electronics at the sensor sometimes the sense the signal conditioning electronics like things like amplification can be put as part of the data acquisition card itself. So, you have such signal conditioning here which is typically analog signal conditioning and then you have a sampling and hold circuit which is uh, which is put we will we'll see what it does and then finally, it gets into digital domain through a through a circuit which is typically referred to as the analog to digital converter or the ADC this is a very well well used term. And then, so at the output of the analog to digital converter, you have bits. So, you have a number of bits which represent the value of the analog signal at a particular sampling instant. And then, that those, those lines or those bits have to be transfer, transferred to the computer. So, you need an interfacing mechanism by which the computer can accept that digital data. So, these are the typical you know this is the part which is called the data acquisition system this is the data acquisition system which we will sometimes refer to as a DAS. So, this overall process what does it it it, it the sensing part is comes from the sensor which is typically not a not part of the signal conditioning and then uh, there is electrical signal conditioning then there is that, that then there could be multiplexing sample and hold multiplexing means that you know time division multiplexing that is looking if you have a number of analog sensor very quickly you scan the channels. So, first see this one convert this to digital then see that one convert this to digital and so on. So, that is called multiplexing and then sample and hold. So, sampling and holding the signal for that small interval of time when it is being converted. Then eddy conversion the con process of converting it to digital and interfacing with computer and then finally, this is also not strictly a part of the data acquisition uh, board 
but the but sometimes it is a part of the data acquisition it is considered to be a part of the data acquisition system because generally data acquisition vendors will not only give you this sort of components they will also supply you with the software which works with these this data and can can you know display it can can store it can uh, trend it analyze it so various functionality of software are also provided for ease of use okay so that's what you do in a typical data acquisition system so what do we do in signal conditioning oops So, what you do in signal conditioning is uh, you could do amplification this is very important because uh, as we will see in detail this is important because every AD converter has what is called this dynamic range and it is important that the analog signal that you are uh, sort of presenting at the input port of the AD converter is uh, utilizes the dynamic range of the AD converter otherwise you are going to have approximation errors larger approximation errors than are necessary. So, it is important to amplify the signal to increase resolution. Isolation is typically required because these field signals can be sometimes be at high uh, they, for example, you know these analog channels generally come either as uh, single ended or as differential. So, when you have single ended it means that this this line this value that is going to be the value of the analog voltage is actually with respect to the ground electrical ground of the AD converter. So, the AD converter is also an electrical circuit that has a ground. So, when you are applying it in a single ended mode this voltage will be measured by the AD converter with respect to its own ground and then converted that value. On the other hand when you when you give it a differential input then what happens is that there are two inputs provided to the AD converter. So, there is a plus and there is a minus terminal and the difference in these two signals are provided right. So, this so this the, the, the potential of this can be quite different from the ground. So, now the voltage difference V plus and V minus actually the signal value that you will get will be proportional to V plus minus V minus. Now, this V plus and V minus can be at pretty high voltages if, if they are coming from let us say a motor winding suppose you want to measure a, a motor winding temperature. So, it is it's, it, it's not uh, in fact, if you connect such high voltages to the AD converter electrically it might it will get it might get damaged. So, therefore, what you do is you put uh, put an isolation circuit such that the input side is actually galvanically isolated with the output side. You have various mechanisms of isolation like optical like you know uh, capacitor based or uh, transfer, transformer based inductive coupling etcetera. Then you have filtering, filtering is required for noise removal as we will see it is also required for a uh, phenomenon called anti aliasing. So, uh, and we you, you could do some linearization in the signal conditioner itself or uh, or you know sometimes you can do the linearization one of the, one of the, one of the benefits of digital data acquisition is that you can do that linearization much probably much more easily in uh, software. So, so now you have so th this is how you condition the each analog channel before you present it for AD conversion right. Now, it, it, it turns out if you see a, if you see any standard data acquisition system that they typically uh, will specify that they can take 8 analog channels simultaneously apparently simultaneously. Now, how do you get 8 analog channels simultaneously? So, typically it is uh, the conceptually the scheme is something like this. So, it is done through a process called multiplexing. So, so, so typically you have the, you know let us say these 4 channels of analog signals are being presented at these 4 inputs right. So, what you do is if you these are you know electronic switches which can be put on or off depending on this address signals. So, maybe this address is 0 0 this is 0 1 this is 1 0 and this is 1 1 right. So, <coughs> So, 
So, what happens is that if you close this switch then this signal gets connected actually this is a this is not connected here this is connected and goes to the sample and hold and goes to the AD conversion. On the other hand if this signal is connected this will go. So, actually so if you connect these four switches in quick succession then over a time interval let us say the overall time interval is delta t. Now, within this delta t if you divide delta t by 4 and then apply these switches on at these one after the other within that overall time delta t then every delta t interval you will get four values of these signals. So, now if you if you if you if you if you are willing to ignore this slight difference between the timings that is if the if the if the, if the, if the timing is close enough compared to the rate of variation of these signals then you can kind of kind of implicitly assume that they are all signals which which these are the four channels uh, after the sampling these four channels you would get into the computer four values. So, you can for your future purpose you can assume that those were the values of the signals all the four which existed at some time at the beginning of delta t, uh, at time delta t without differentiating between this you know delta t by 4 and all that. So, this is called multiplexing then we have sample and hold. So, why we have hold is that while the eddy converter is converting the signal the signal it is sometimes necessary that the signal is maintained at the input. But for but that maintaining need not be done by the switch because these you see these, these switches take finite time for getting switched on and off. So, you just so you put another additional circuit such that you put on the switch. So, let this voltage be sensed by that circuit and then this circuit is this circuit is called the sample and hold circuit. The circuit is such that it will hold that voltage value. Now, you can open the switch again, but this value will be held and so, the, so, so the eddy converter will actually see this held value even if this switch has been opened. So, this opening will take some time and it will be ready to close the next switch after let us say another delta t by 4 right. So, this is called the sample and hold procedure where a particular time instant value is stored and held for a small interval within a circuit right this is called sample and hold. So, while at the switching point you may you may close the switch for uh, very small points of time. So, you, you get these values at the, uh, of the various see these are the samples. So, while this could be for channel number 1, channel number 2, channel number 3, channel number 4 and then again channel number 1. So, you have these 4 channels, but at the output of the hold circuit you will find that this value 0 is being held up till the value is sensed to again the hold circuit is, is, is instructed that now you, you release that held value and now acquire a new value. So, by the time channel, the next channel switch has been put on and the value has stabilized there. So, now the hold circuit senses the new value and then again holds it for the next interval. So, it holds it for the next interval then again it senses the new value and then again holds it. So, this is what happens by a sample and hold right. That is because we need to hold it because otherwise sometimes the AD conversion can get into error. If the signal if while the converter is converting if the signal vanishes from the input terminal then the AD converter can get into problems. So, so now so we need see basically between the in between the signal condition input and the AD converter input there is this block which 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 actually satis does does two things first it will multiplex several channels and second it has to do sample and hold now this it can do in in in, in two ways and which one you will choose depends on depends on uh, how fast your signals are varying and how fast is your sampling frequency okay so this is a case where you see that uh, so, we first present this architecture this is, a, this is the analog input subsystem right. So, here is the AD converter. So, you are seeing between these input signals then signal conditioning 
then this is the eddy converter input. So, here in this case what you are doing is that you have put a multiplexer on each channel and then you put uh, you know uh, anti aliasing filter this can be also th this can also be a part of this filter if you want because the anti aliasing filter may be different for different uh, channels and then you put a, so if, if 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 that is not required to have different different anti aliasing filter and if the transient response of the anti aliasing filter is fast enough then you can actually have uh, you can actually put one anti aliasing filter and then one sample and hold amplifier. So, you see that this channels you put uh, you are saving cost because you are putting only one anti aliasing filter and one sample and hold circuit and for all the let us say 4 or 8 channels. So, the assumption is that now what happens is that remember that so the difference is that now you, you when you get these 4 values at the end of delta t remember that these 4 values are actually sampled delta t by 4 times later. So, they are actually not samples at the same theoretically at the same accurate instant of time. Now, now if that makes a difference if that does not make a difference to you then having one filter and one sample and hold is ok and that is cheaper right. So, you go for this architecture, but if it does make a difference to you then you have to look at the next architecture which is called the simultaneous sample and hold circuit where after signal conditioning you have this sample and holds at for all channels individual sample and holds and a what I have not shown, but what exists is that there is a control signal which will go to all these sample and holds. So, that each sample and hold will simultaneously sample all these channels that is possible now because you have because you have uh, put separate sa separate sample and hold circuits. So, they will so you so they will now these so they will hold the values. So, now remember that the values which are being held here correspond to samples at the same instant of time. See they are going to be read into the AD little bit later but they are time synchronous in the sense that the those 4 values represent values of process variables at the same instant of time. So, the sample did simultaneously and held it simultaneously and then read it serially because you are having one eddy converter. If you had different eddy converters then probably you could have gone for uh, simultaneous eddy conversion also, but that is generally hardly necessary because the eddy converters are quite fast and because we are talking about processes uh, physical processes. So, their their dynamics would be complete would be quite slow and the eddy converter speed is more than accurate. So, you would and the eddy converter is I mean expensive. So, you do not want to have more than one eddy converter rather than have more than one sample and hold channels right for simultaneity. Uh, 